And you're welcome back. Uh, continuing the conversation of breakfast, we're shifting focus now to sports. And uh, we're talking here about mathematical calculations for qualifications. Uh, former Super Eagles International Ike uh, has urged football loving Nigerians not to castigate the Golden Eaglets and the coaching crew for the team's poor showing, and that's in the ongoing West Africa Football Union, and that's the Wafu Under-17 tournament holding in Lome, Togo. The Eaglets uh, won one score draw against Ghana's Black Starlets in the second game of the championship on Saturday. That inadequate structure not put in place to develop grassroots football in the country has left other countries to catch up with Nigeria once dreaded in the cadets competition. Other countries that are serious uh, to maintain their dominance in football and are striving hard to, uh, to remain at the top. For Nigeria, that has been the best in the age group competitions in Africa and at the world level, there is no basic structure to uh, put in place to discover players and work with them to develop. We're now going to talk more on this uh, with our in-house sports reporter, correspondent, presenter. He does everything sports, uh, Wally Scott. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thanks. First of all, what's this thing about age, age football in the country? I don't know. I think, um, Anita, you'll agree with me that um, we lie about our ages in Nigeria. You can go to Ikeja, like right now, and get um, your Avidavit and lie about your age and pay one eight or one nine, max 2,000 there. And you actually get your age rearranged for you. And it's affecting us. You can't cheat nature for so long or for as long as you want to. It's sad, but you can't do that. And um, we do that in Nigeria. And the super egos can get there. I've told people in the past that, listen, the Super Eagles can actually win the World Cup oh. if we actually put out the right guys who are, green, who are greenhorns, talented, who are the real age they claim to be. But we see what happens. You know, and, and you are seeing a piracy, Kedia, who is playing in the under-17 and is a surgeon in the police force. Hmm. We know how long it, get, it takes you to get to the post of sergeant. You know? so, I think we'll get there eventually. But the coaches, the... I have had a major issue with a major coach. I won't say his name right now. He sent me text. He sent policemen to me in the past because I said, I thought you didn't collect money. I was on air every day saying, this guy doesn't collect money. And I found out he actually collected money. Anyway, um, well, that, that's a... That's tough on that day, yeah. yeah. That's tough on that day. <laughs> um, you know, we, we of course, um, seem to be struggling with the under-17. Um, we're talking now of calculations, and it's one thing that we always, unfortunately, always run to start to make mat mathematical calculations um, because we need to qualify um, when we can simply just win games and qualify. Um, so how do you think we would, of course, um, fare going forward? You know, do you, do you expect that there would be a miracle? Do you, what do you think must change? In the um, South Americas, the first ever under-17 competition came up. I think in Argentina, or somewhere, Bolivia, or somewhere. And um, we won the first, the debut, the debut on the 17 World Cup. We won it. Mm. And um, that's where the miracle of demand came on. And since then, it's been a downward, you know, and, and, and I think, I'd like, let's go back to a cheating again. Um, parents are willing to conveniently, consistently lie, swear that their children are actually 17 when they're actually 23. And like I said earlier, you can't consistently lie. Nature will catch up with you. You know, it caught up with Kanu Wako. It caught up with um, a lot of African players in the past. And um, we can't com continue to do this. Yes, our parents want our children to do well. Our parents want our children to be like Mikel Obi and A.G. Okochan or Bafemi Martins. Yeah, but should, should we lie about it? So, okay, so this is, this is okay, uh, oh, sorry, um, Anita, so this is a problem with the Nigerian Football Association now, or Federation rather now, or with the players. I think, um, let's put square pegs in square holes. Osaroge, oh, if you are not a broadcaster, don't be a banker. Um, if you are a broadcaster, don't be a banker. Be a broadcaster. If you are a banker, don't come and be a broadcaster. You know, it's, it's don't, let's, let's put square pegs. And these guys there, most of the guys who run 
almost everything in every sphere in Nigeria today are people who are put there for political reasons. You know, um, the guys who run our football, are they actually footballers? Have they been there? Have they done that? I have spoken to Sheikh Mwadegbami numerous times. And this is a man who has been involved in football practically all his life. He has, actually has a football academy. And shouldn't that kind of person be involved in our football? He knows what takes, as in what gives. He, what do we want? What do these guys want? He knows what they want. But when you bring in an Amaju Penik, who is a politician, who used to be an in-law of the former governor of Delta State, Uduagan, yeah, so, you, you know, it, it, it gets to be a problem. Yeah, so most what, time, I'm, what, what I'm trying to, because I don't want to, you know, it to, I don't want it to be personal. I mean, it's not personal um, now. What I'm saying uh, is now is that. I, I, get, I get, you know, the point that you're trying to make. What I'm, you know, hoping that we can, let, let's see if we can talk about the hope that we can do better as an under-17 team. We've, we've established where the challenges are. Uh, do we also still have, you know, coaching issues? Uh, do we have uh, logistics, training issues, any of those? I am suggesting, I am, I am, I am suggesting that um, we bring, like I said earlier, square pegs and square holes. Um, let's um, bring in um, people who know football, who know Nigerian football. We, Nigerian football has a culture. Who knows the culture of Nigerian football? And um, come in pl into place and um, get these things, these things done. It's not enough to actually bring a Genot Roar, a foreigner, to come and actually work on the Super Eagles. No. Let's work on people who actually know how these things run. Who knows what the government wants? We all know that every sphere, including sports, is being run by the government. Mm -hmm. Let's try and work around it. For example, when um, the sports minister was going to be put in place. Everybody thought he was going to be put in communications. He was put in sports. And he's doing fantastically well. He's doing very well. Sonji Dari, so far, so good. However, we need someone who is... Gra See, the beauty of a successful person is how far he has suffered. We need someone who has suffered in the sports. You know, who, has, who, who knows how it works, you know? Well, who knows the Jugari okay, of the... Can, I, so, you can know? I just ask you quickly, this issue about age falsification and all of that, yeah. is this not an indication of a failing system of grassroots football in Nigeria? It's not a Nigerian factor, please. Oh, okay. I, so I, I hate explain? the word Nigerian factor. It's not a Nigerian factor. It's, it works in... It, it, they do it in South America, Argentina, Brazil, Peru, Bolivia. It works there every time, you know? So the truth be said... Age cheats, it's everywhere. No, I'm not talking about age cheats now. I'm talking about, let's look at our own situation in Nigeria. Yeah. How far have we gone in the development of grassroots football? Because if we're saying people are falsifying their ages, yeah. how much investment are we putting into, you know, in, hold on just a minute. Yeah, yeah. Just by my place, just by my family house, there's a school, a, a field, secondary yeah. a field. Yeah. Yeah. You will see lots of kids come to play. I don't know much about football, to be honest, but... I see how they play, and I can see the zeal in the eyes, the passion. And sometimes I ask myself, why don't we have scouts coming here to pick up these young boys? His name is. These his are name, actually young people. So why are we not investing? His name in is Etsin Arantes do Nascimento. We all call him Pele. He said, only two people in the world are built to play football: Brazilians and Nigerians. That's what he says, and he's the one of the greatest in the world football. And I can agree with you, totally, that. Talents abound in Nigeria. We have too many football talents in Nigeria. Young football talents. Yes. That are on on However, on let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Kelechi Iinacho plays in Leicester right now. He brought his father was rich enough to bring in scouts to watch him play. They feel they were actually doing the camera thing for him and all that. And in the course of doing that, Dele Alampasu, the goalkeeper in Nigeria now was caught the attention of the scouts. I was like, this guy too is good. Alan Paso is poor. He sells pure water in Ogba. And Alan Paso was picked up too. And he's big today. So for right. people who where, 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 where okay. I'm going to Go now ahead. is that um, it's unfortunate that our coaches in Nigeria tend to collect money from the players. So we end up churning out not the best that we have, but the... Second best. Right, let's, because, let's, let's move on. But let's talk. 
Yeah. For some reason, Osarege does not want to get involved in us. But no, no, no. I mean, but because the, but the truth be said, but the truth be said, we have talent here, but our coaches and our scouts tend to be relatively lazy and don't go out to them. I know a particular situation. Osarege will get hot with this one. Our, our, a, a team in Ogba, Ogba in, in Suriname, Lagos, in, in Lagos, who play good football. There are 11 players, play good football. And then when it was time for them to go abroad, in, to Cote d'Ivoire, besides the Abidjan, the team changed. But that's the talk for another day. But the truth be said, we have talents in Nigeria. Can we work on them? Okay. You know, Let's now move we to talk about more exciting stories and uh, good news. <laughs> Um, in the EPL, Manchester United currently on top uh, with uh, three points. Um, that's good news. Of, uh, Liverpool, that's great news. Even if it lasts for 24 hours, I don't care. Um, <laughs> we're really going to hold on to that top, uh, you know, that top spot for a bit. So t t let's talk about that now. Um, it wasn't expected. Um, a lot of people maybe had or, or also written off, you know, Manchester United at the, you know, the start of the season. Mm. Uh, they had a, you know, really slow start also struggling, you know, in the, in the bottom half of the, of the table. But they've been able to pull themselves up to, you know, first position. Um, how do you think, you know, that has happened? Is it, you know, luck or um, has Ole Gunnar Solskjaer been able to do the right things so far? If you've watched my former bulletins, I've always talked about um, in modern day football, we need a robust, a robust um, team. And um, some teams have first, second, third 11s. Man U does have that. You know, Man U has conveniently a first 11, a second 11, maybe even a third 11 at this point, you know? And, <laughs> and um, you're looking at the Manchester United who have um, Donny van der Beek on the bench, yeah. who've got um, Daniel James on the bench. These are fantastic players, you know? And, um, um, Yes, I think they deserve to be there. We've heard Ole out, Ole out for so long, you know, and um, Solskjaer has to go out, and he's doing well. And I don't think Ole is a fantastic coach, if you ask my opinion. I'm a big, big Man U fan all my life. And, and um, um, you, you, you've seen um, Alex Ferguson still in the shadows there, still doing his work. You know, he's not Ole, you know. Michael Carrick, he brings Michael Carrick, he brings in... Is technical old, staff, technical there, staff, yes. you know, and um, yes, I think he deserves to be there. Um, Jose Mourinho said all the way that in modern day football, you need to have a big squad. Liverpool don't have a big squad, Tottenham don't have a big squad, and um, Aston Villa proved to us that they can actually churn out a big squad because they had COVID 19 pandemic problems. And um, I think we need um, the COVID is now actually bringing out the good in the teams these days. But like I said, um, football should be shut down. But Man U deserves to be on top. They are doing very well. How, how do you see, you know, the next few weeks, um, you know, turning out? Uh, there's con the continuous clamor for, you know, that top position. There's some teams, you know, that may have already given up on winning the league, you know, and they, you may not even see themselves as title challenges. Arsenal may not, you know, be in the title challenges com uh, conversation anymore. Um, but, you know, how do you see them all you know, moving on, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Don't Tottenham, ever, Manchester don't, City, Liverpool. Don't ever write out Jose Mourinho. Don't ever. Um, Tottenham boss, he's always, he will always come back at you. You know, and um, that will be a problem. And um, Manchester United will give um, Liverpool a run for their money. No doubt. Um, Man City will always continue to struggle. Man City have always been a team where either Gabriel Jesus or... Sergio Kuna Guerrero have problems and they have problems. But um, only teams who have big squads, teams who have um, a large squad, will actually make it happen at this point. And um, Manchester United, Manchester City, Everton will give you a run for your money. You know, you've got every, see, everybody wanted Ames Rodriguez and it goes to Everton of all the clubs in the world. So, you're going to look at teams like that. But teams like um, Arsenal, Arsenal have lost their guns. The, the, the gun is there, but the bullets are gone, you know, so they've lost it. I've always described Arsenal as, um, as a child who is very, very, very dull, but has a good handwriting. Mm. I don't know what you want to use. Wow. Wow. Really. You know what, truth be said, yes, um, the, the, teams, the, the teams who I will predict will do well in every league, not only in, in the Premier League, in every league, will be teams who have large squads. 
who actually can boast of two elevens. And now in the days of COVID, the pandemic, if, if, if a pandemic breaks out now and the league says the match must go on, they can actually bring out in second eleven. Those are teams that will do well this period, mm. really. And talking about the pandemic, what's your own assessment of how it has affected sports globally? I think um, basically um, most um, countries across the world are hypocrites. They are hypocritical about the pandemic because um, football brings a lot of money, television rights and all that. And most countries, let me use the UK as a typical example. The UK says it's a total national lockdown. The little English that I've learned, when you use the word total national lockdown, how can you tell me you have totally, nationally locked down a country? But football still goes on. Come on, that's hypocritical. You want to make money, but you still want to be in government and be like, we're in government and we're doing right. You're not doing right like that. Yeah. If you want to totally, nationally lock down a country, football is included. But if the EPL is not... Um, causing uh, more increase. Well, okay. Is the EPL essential spread? duties? No, no, no. But what I'm saying, I'm asking is, a question. You know, it may <laughs> not so be, funny. but it's obviously know, but, not. But, but but you know, the thing is, if it is not necessarily you know um, increasing the spread of COVID nineteen, then why can't the games go on? Forty people just before the total lockdown in the UK. Forty people in the football world tested positive for coronavirus. Okay. So how can you tell me that they are not being hypocritical when they say we don't lock down football, but we lock down everything else? And then after that, they, the announcement, 40 people get infected. Three, three matches were actually postponed due to coronavirus. Aston Villa played against Liverpool with a depleted team because 10 members of that team and you still let football go on because of the football you make. Please tell me what the word hypocritical means. Mm. All right. Uh, that's a lot to them. Uh, Come the on. only one that really concerns me is the fact that Manchester United is top of the league. <laughs> but um, don't say uh, they don't want say to they, if they want to very self centered. To be honest, if they want to lock down now and shut down the EPL, they can shut it down. You know, because we're on top, yeah. And yes, oh, and, on, and basically player. just give the All title right. to. Now whoever, you are a political too. Let them give the title to whoever is on top at the time that they shut the down. The Nigerian League last COVID season actually gave the, 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 the Premier League, um, the Nigerian League title to the guy who was on top when the league was stopped. Yeah, exactly. So they should do the same thing now in the All right, guys. All right, guys. We, we, can, we, can, we can have this argument off air right now. <laughs> let's, uh, let's call it a day on the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. <laughs> Thanks to Wally Scott for Thank almost you, setting Anita. the studio Thank on fire. You, Thanks to Sarage uh, for being cool <laughs> as ever. <laughs> My name Felix. Let's hope uh, that uh, you know everybody can definitely have fun because you know when, talk, when we're talking about the Tokyo Olympics 2021, there's, there's, been of, yes, there's been lots of yes, there's been lots of controversy. Not. People voting, you know, for the games to be postponed. You know, lots of conversations about football and the pandemic. But it's been a great time here on the breakfast. Thank you very much for watching. I am Aneta Felix. I am Osaogi Ogbo. And uh, if you missed out on any of the conversations that we had this morning, remember to join us on social media. It's pretty simple. At plus. TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel. You can subscribe and always get to um, watch some of uh, the videos uh, that um, you know are po posted there. Um, um, interviews that we have on the breakfast and every other part of our broadcast uh, uh, 24 hours. Thanks once again for joining us. The news comes up at 9am. Um, it's goodbye from me. Yes, and have a great day.